see that the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 34 of the Lowdown Show Brand Wars on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We're your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also in this episode, we will be doing our TLC 2016 predictions at the end of the episode. So, also during the show would have been the tw- Twitter polls, Luke Gallows polls. We're going to scrap that this week, but we're still bringing out WWE headlines, just very, very brief this week, where we talk about any important news in the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And after we are done recording, it is posted for your listening enjoyment in full on Spreaker itself, YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Stitcher. So go check us out wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. If you'd like to join in the conversation, have your thoughts and questions and, re- and all read on the podcast itself, tweet us at OldsbarWP or by dropping a comment on YouTube. I am your host... The self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And every week, I am continued to be joined by my co-host, the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. We're back. We're back. After a, well, I guess we weren't missing, but it's been a long week. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the delay, folks. But we're getting the lowdown show to you, and we're adding our TLC predictions. Since TLC is tomorrow. It is tomorrow, and uh, SmackDown gets TLC this year. And it looks like they're doing it right. I think Raw fucked up Hell in the Cell. I just hate the gimmick Hell in the Cell pay per view itself. I'll I'll keep TLC. And we get into that. There's a question this week that ties into that. Um, but crazy week in the WWE. Had some ups, had some downs. Had a debut. Had a debut of a new show too, 205 Live, which was excellent. Um, and some crazy, shocking NXT Live news. Everything happens at NXT Live events. Nothing's happened at WWE Live in a long time. <laughs> the last thing I remember that something happened that wasn't televised was when we were at a Raw in Buffalo and the dark match after that they, this was back when like the network first started out was the Sheamus versus Rusev for what was the US, US title. Yeah, and Rusev and she, won. And Rusev won the title in the dark match. <laughs> yep. Joe beat Balor for the title at a live event. Yep, at an NXT Live event. And now, as we get into our headlines, Shinsuke Nakamura... Just beat Samoa Joe yesterday in an NXT live yeah. event in Japan. Of course, like stuff happens when like we're late or yeah. we don't have a show that week. But t- uh, Triple H, being the ultimate boss that he is, is benefit is uh, giving us the benefit of the doubt and showing us the match this Wednesday on NXT. Good. So that's going to be good. Um, so let's get into the show. So we're going to have our tweets, but we will not have the Luke Alice pulls after that will tie into our TLC predictions. So, let's get yeah. any- <laughs> did people uh, did people obey by the questions? Uh, I think now? so. I I it's been a long week this week, but I think they listened, and I'm proud of you guys out there. I'm so proud of you guys. <laughs> Bring a tear to my eye. I can't read nine questions. No, it's too long. Yeah, you want you guys want an eight hour show here? <laughs> We're trying already, to not trying not to be like Monday Night Raw. Okay, it's already eight thirty. We're trying to be like SmackDown, where it gets to yeah. the point, and you guys just love us. We don't want to be on the air till midnight here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we end of the raw tweets. We got a new member <laughs> tweeting at us, and <laughs> okay, his name goes with our our podcast title, I guess, as we are no holds barred, and we have no holds barred anything we say. So I guess there's no holds barred as this guy, his name. He just doesn't have no holds barred. He has no holds barred in picking his name. So his Twitter name is Jizz. <laughs> his Twitter handle is at Jizzman. All right. Uh, it's interesting. I guess you just you added to the list of goons, but we're going to read your tweets, bro. Uh, he puts, I did enjoy Sammy sticking sticking it to Mick, but fuck the New Day trash-ass team and fuck that trash-ass two women's divisions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he puts, oh, okay, this was the first week. I'm a new guy, and I simply thought this Raw was pretty bad. A lot of this happened to wear it too obvious. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Thank you, Jizzman. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> oh, God. Don't even start with that welcome shit. <laughs> uh, next set tweets, Colin Gamat and you won. Puts, really enjoyed Raw this week. No complaints. Nine out of ten. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> Colin, you really loved Raw this week, eh? Yeah, just as much as he loves his Philly sports teams. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Next set of tweets come from Glorious Greg. Liked how passionate Zayn sounded in his promo with Foley, and the main event sealed the deal for me. I'm glad my girl Sasha won the Women's Championship, and I give Raw this week 8 out of 10. Hmm, interesting. I do agree with the Sami Zayn part. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Next set of tweets, and we're not playing a theme this week. Oh, okay, Greg also put, Raw was good. I liked Rollins being, beating up Jericho. The segment with Cesaro and Sheamus was pretty cool as well. Okay, thank you, Glorious Greg. Next set of tweets comes from Michael Chow. We do have no intro music. Guys, the thing with the intro music, I know all y'all want intro music for your Twitter handles, but guess what? We can't fit all that in the app, okay? So, so make everyone happy. Make everyone happy. Out. The winner of Twitter Fan of the Year or an Olds Bar Wrestling Podcast Fan of the Year will get an entrance theme from now on. And then we'll make it a yearly thing, you know? Yep. They'll get the entrance theme for the year. Okay. So, Michael Chow puts 7 out of 10 for Raw. Happy, but tired of Sasha only being able to win the title on Raw. Charlotte does not need to be pushed. Break the streak. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, pro, Sasha wins Charlotte's best of 7,000 series. Sammy verbally helluva kicks heel fully. And Jericho masks, put him on, man. Fantastic. <laughs> We'll get into that. <laughs> uh, cons teasing a Jericho Owens breakup. Hashtag no, no, no. The Rusev Enzo feud. I got only one word to describe it. S-A-W-F-T. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, repeat question. At Cooper Cappy. Favorite TLC match. One of my favorite ladder matches was Jericho versus Benoit at Royal Rumble 2001. I honestly don't even have one, to be honest. It's tough, a favorite TLC match, man. Like, my favorite of all time is still going to go be WrestleMania 17 with the three, probably one of the three greatest tag teams will go down in history. And that match is just epic all the way around. Uh, I'll, go with the, I'll go with the WLC match. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Michael Tell. His greatest TLC match, you heard it here first, was the WLC match in the pre-show. I think it was like TLC 2012. That was probably match of the year, for sure. I think it was 14 or 13. <laughs> It wasn't match year. It was god awful. That went over. That was in worst match of the year for our Slammies. God, yeah, I think it did. Yep. Didn't it win it? Yep. Uh, so next set of tweets: Irrelevance at Forlorn. But so Raw had a lot of ups, but the show was predictable. Roman and Sasha winning, predictable. New Day winning, predictable. What loved was the hi- What I loved was the highlight reel, the tease breakup, Sheamus and Cesaro bonding, the passionate Sami Zayn speaking his mind. Roman was a bad on the mic, and I enjoyed his match. Unlike me enjoying the disaster that is the women's division. <laughs> I hate babyface Sasha and don't drool all over her wishing I could tap it like some do. <laughs> okay. All right, then. <laughs> I want good storylines and not this bullshit, predictable, hot potato garbage. But Raw was decent. Heyman is amazing. 5.7 out of 10. And his picture this week is from the Paul Heyman promo <laughs> that we saw on Raw. <laughs> <laughs> oh god you're relevant you, you, you crack us up man last set of raw tweets comes from Casey Salvis at Salvis94 decent show new day is still boring time for Zayn to go to Smackdown 6 out of 10 simply put and simply enough yes I agree with him Smackdown tweets here we go we'll get into them and first set come from Jizz at Jizzman <laughs> can you please pick a different name Jizz, I don't want to have to read that <laughs> Oh, he puts, I thought SmackDown was good, and I can't wait for Orton and White to capture the titles. Ooh, interesting prediction there. The promos are great, and Trip and Double A will, okay, the promos are great, and American Alpha will get their chance. Of course, it's not now, but soon. Yeah, okay, I agree with him there. This is just my opinion, but it isn't a shit one. I agree. Um, Glorious Greg puts, SmackDown was just terrible this week, but I'm glad Randy and Bray joining the tag team division. Other than that, I give SmackDown a point five out of ten this week. Holy or I wonder if he man. means five out of ten. I don't know if that's a mistake, period, or not, Glorious Greg, but point five out of ten <laughs> is a low rating. <laughs> God. Uh, he puts, I give 205 live an eight out of ten this week and just blew SmackDown out of the water and is way far better. Interesting. I, I'll have to kind of agree. 205 was, I mean, it's the debut show. You know, we're going to get a bunch of promos. And literally, half the show was matches, half the show. And they only got 45 minutes. So what can you do with 45 minutes? I really hope they get longer because I really thought it was going to be a full hour. But it was only 45 minutes. Um, call it at Game U and U1 puts uh, SmackDown is lucky. I give it 1 out of 10 this week. 
<laughs> and 205 Live blows it out of the water with three matches in two hour SmackDown <laughs> with three on a one hour on, so on, on 205 getting one hour. Pathetic. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Casey Salvas puts both shows were good. At least Ellsworth is finally out of the main event picture, and I 100% agree with you. Thank fucking Christ. He can, we'll get into what happened to him on SmackDown, but Jesus Christ, thank God. Michael Chow at Room Michael Chow puts 4 out of 10 for SmackDown Live, and Raw are separate shows, so I don't know why they couldn't move TLC to the Sunday before Roadblock. Hashtag dumpster fire. That's what I said. It was way too early for yep. the pay-per-view. Yep. Question, how do you like SmackDown Live's pay-per-view having a variety of TLC matches compared to Raw's Hell in a Cell with three of the same Hell in a Cell matches? I love it. I mean, it's tough because TLC is three different things. Hell in a Cell is one thing. Yeah. I mean, TLC but what we go back to things. we were saying, if you're going to have a Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, every match is in Hell in a Cell. Don't give me this bullshit, this singles match, and you know, there's count outs and rope breaks and all this bullshit. It, just, it doesn't need to be a pay-per-view anymore. It just no. needs to be a match that happens once in a while. Yeah. Um, so TLC, I love that SmackDown literally has like split it up. Like there's one TLC match, there's a ta- chairs match, there's a tables match, uh, there's a ladder match. I like that. I like a spread around, yeah. and this actually looks like a good pay per view this Sunday, tomorrow. <laughs> Irrelevant. That four Lauren puts. So I watched SmackDown today, and it was very promo heavy. I love the great main event and the build for the TLC had it's been great because. To be honest, SmackDown has been building TLC before SummerSlam. Because I guess so, like, some of the feuds are like yeah. that. And I thought it's been good. I'm invested in all feuds except Ellsworth. Thank God he got murdered during that amazing Styles Clash. <laughs> 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 Plus, these two women's feuds are 100% better than the two women's divisions. I like... I. I like I saw tweets saying the bras women's division is good. <laughs> <laughs> or he puts, like, I saw that there. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I, that's pretty bad. And, of course, that's their opinion, but it's simple retardation. If you're really enjoying this shit, hot potato title matches, I give Raw the edge. So SmackDown gets 5 out of 10 with Raw with a 5.7. Plus 205 was amazing. Just concerned about the audience attendance. Yeah. yeah. Um that sucked because was it before it was a tape before no, after, after after i thought it was supposed to be taped before but i guess they took out superstars before or main event before smackdown and they replaced it with 205 after smackdown and it sucks i mean you're you're in a it sucked this week i think just because they're in a casual place that, you're not gonna have people stay that and it's a school night too for yeah. most parents if they want to bring their kids home or whatever yeah. But I think they're scrapping superstars, and I think they're putting main event before Raw. Mm. Well, they should just – literally, they should just put 205 in Florida. They have the better crowd. The NXT crowd is always lively. They and, appreciate that style. Yeah. Um, call them put 205 live review. They put SmackDown to shame. 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 Michael Child puts pros for SmackDown. Babe Mella gives Nikki the verbal rack attack. Baron Corbin gives Kalisto the charity, the chair to gives Kalisto to charity, <laughs> and phenomenal revenge on James Ellis. <laughs> Ellis. <laughs> uh, Michael Chow puts cons. Everything else. Hashtag dumpster fire. Smackdown. Light it up, man. <laughs> oh I love this man, guy. yeah. So those are your tweets for this week, guys. And thank you as always. I'm sorry if I missed any. I don't think I have, but if I did, I apologize. Please attach them to the the Twitter tag. Please do not just send me a tweet. Please attach them so I can get to them. It's hard freaking organizing all that shit. But anyway, not everyone else for not going over the three questions. Yeah. Thank you very much, and you know who you are out there. Thank you. <laughs> so we'll get into the raw review then. So we're not doing Luke Gallows polls, and we'll tie that into the TLC. Uh, Raw this week, yeah, yeah, okay, all right. It was it was okay. Uh, I thought it was gonna be better. To be honest, I thought they were gonna do a little bit better, but there was some. Okay, let me let me rephrase that. There were some ups, there were some downs, and at least I f- I didn't feel as tired as I usually do for a three hour Raw. I felt like they kind of spread a little thing. A li- they're, they're slowly spreading stuff around. So that people don't get bored in the middle of the fucking show and then fall asleep and then miss the main event. I just have no expectations for Raw anymore. I, I know. It sucks, it. man. It, I honestly, it just needs to go back to two hours. It, it, the three hours is too much. You're going to have to start putting more content on, like more viewable content for us to pay attention for three fucking hours of WWE Raw and commercial breaks. <laughs> There's more commercial break time than there is for wrestling time. Promos. God. 
and then the, the matches they give us aren't even good. Yeah. So, so oh. we end the opening segment. We get the highlight reel. Oh, this was fantastic. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> the best part <laughs> was when he mentioned the mask of Jericho. <laughs> Jericho goes, that was a conspiracy. That was not Chris Jericho in a Sin Cara mask. That was Sin Cara in a Chris Jericho mask. The mask, <laughs> Jericho mask. <laughs> the mask of Jericho. Jericho. And he put it on, man. <laughs> I was on the ground. Literally, dying. anything he says, he can turn that to anything and it's just gold. Oh, man. And Kevin Owens was like, yeah, yeah you know, they, they were going along with it. And, and, and fucking, of course, fucking Roman, Roman Reigns, Reigns comes out. Oh, yeah, you Roman Reigns. Oh, my God. So excited. No. I'm like Kevin Dunn with a boner for him. <laughs> <laughs> no, fuck Roman Reigns. <laughs> fuck that guy. Comes into this segment, I'm like, what the fuck does Roman Reigns have to do with this segment right now? I'm like, what the fuck? He's got the U.S. title. Stay away from the Universal title. But of course, no. Um, oh God. And then uh, does Roman Reigns have any more lines to saying the man or you're just a man? Wow, man, fucking. Incredible mic work by Roman and Reigns then, uh, there. That <gasps> Kevin Owens is like, I'm going to introduce you to the Kevin Owens show, and then Roman's like, well, here's a spoiler alert. By the end of the show, I'm gonna be kicking your ass. Ooh, oh my god, Roman, you're so good, man. Fuck, I'm a, I'm gonna get a Roman Reigns shirt now. He's just so good. I love him. And for you guys, relax. I'm not being fucking serious. He's garbage. He's god awful. The crowd still hates him because he sucks. He's and still here, the little, fucking kids cheering him. We had oh a little God. tease in the middle of it, because Jericho was like, you know what I'm going to do, Reigns? You know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do? And no one's like, shut up! <laughs> oh, and Jericho yeah. just kind of stood there oh, like, man. oh. He like, gave him the look. <laughs> the look of Jericho. Jericho. Stare it down, oh, man. man. <laughs> but he just he kind of like looked at him like that for a minute, and then he went like really sad for the rest of the segment. Yeah. Oh. God, that was just I, I guess, to, teasing the deception yeah, there. And it led to a match between Roman and Owens for the main event. God. And the winner. Actually, it wasn't even the main event. No. My bad. But later on in the show, Jericho was backstage. He was done with Owens. He, uh, there's a scene of him leaving the arena. He gets in the limo. Uh, the driver <laughs> knocks the list down. <laughs> and the driver's just like, oh, shit. And then Jericho goes to pick it up. Uh and then as he's getting up, uh, he hears a voice saying, did I make the list? And he's like, yeah. And he thinks it's the limbo driver. Turns around. It's, Ro- it's fucking Seth Rollins. And there- <laughs> a parking lot beatdown occurs. Like, when's the fucking last time we saw a parking lot brawl? Jericho tries going through the other side of the limo. Yeah. And Rollins just meets him at the other <laughs> he side. He just runs around. <laughs> How predictable is that? Well, look, 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 when's the last time we saw a parking lot brawl? This was sick. Yep. I actually liked it. And yeah, Rollins man. pedigrees him on top of the car. I'm like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Like this is like classic raw right here. Like shit, we need to be seeing on a weekly basis. That was that was good. That would give them yeah. That. And then uh, so it led to Kevin again, like you said, uh, Kevin Owens accepting Roman Reigns' challenge. If Roman Reigns wins, he gets a title shot roadblock. Fan fucking tactic. Because you know that makes fucking sense. Roman Reigns who already has the U.S. title. Let's just bury the U.S. title even more. It's like if Dean Ambrose had it. You know the the Shield are literally poisoned to the U.S. title. None of them can hold the U.S. title because they just bury it. Yeah, Rollins too. Remember, he was Ro- Rusev. Stuff. As bad as he is, did a better job of promoting the U.S. title than Roman Reigns. I actually like Rusev with the title. It's because he he was a guy promoting how good Bulgaria was as the U.S. champion. And it was, was ironic and it made sense. And he was defending it. Yeah. So Roman like Roman Reigns doesn't need the title. God. So the match ends up being in the Coleman event. Uh, it was actually. Okay, I'm not saying it's because of Roman Reigns. It's because of Kevin Owens. The match was pretty decent. Except the ending. Roman Reigns won. Clean. Clean. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? So your Universal Champion loses to your US Champion. Not only are you burying the US title, you are burying Kevin Owens as the Universal Champion. This guy was supposed to be looking as your top guy on Raw. And I don't understand it. He's a heel. Usually the heels as the main champion always look strong and never get buried. Why does Kevin Owens get buried here? Because they want to give Roman Reigns a shot, you know? Why the fuck does he need a title shot? He doesn't, and it it's making Kevin Owens' title run look irrelevant right now. And why the fuck is the U.S. title not in the line? Why is it just the Universal yeah, title? Why is it not title, title for title? title being defended at, at Royal Rumble, I mean, um, Roadblock, so... No, it should be title for title. That would be, I mean, uh, something that you don't want to put at a single branded pay-per-view, but come on! You either take the U.S. title off Roman Reigns, then do it, or you don't have the match at all. Have have Owen screw Reigns over for the U.S. title next week or something on yeah. Raw, and then 
you know? I can see them trying to show that without Jericho, he can't win. Yeah. In that sense, I think that's probably why they did that. They're making him look so weak like yeah. that. But Roman Reign gets rewarded, rewarded again. Fan fucking tastic. There's one plus though. After the match backstage, Owen says he's still best friends with Y2J and wishes he could have been there by his side. And that's the reason why he lost. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so maybe they're not teasing that much deception. Classic. We'll see. All right. Next part of Raw. I don't fucking know what the hell this was. Bro. Fucking Braun Strowman versus R-Truth. Like, what the fuck is this booking? Who's booking this shit? What a test. R-Truth? Fuck. What a good matchup. Going from Sami Zayn Holy to R-Truth. Holy man. Yo, Braun Strowman, better watch out for R-Truth. Hey, I love R-Truth. Guy's got a phenomenal record at beating up big guys. <laughs> no, he doesn't. And we got a squash match. What else is fucking new with Braun Strowman? And then he beats up Goldust after Yeah, Goldust too. tries to attack him. And Zane comes out for the save. But again, he gets his ass kicked. And again, Foley comes out for the save once again. And Zane is pissed off at Foley here for being misused and treated like a charity case. And says he needs to be saved from Mick Foley. Again, I agree. Fuck, this is awesome. The promo we got after this between Foley and Zayn was intense you could as tell fuck. It was, it was a shoot, but also at the same time, Zayn, you could tell what Zayn was saying, he believed it too. Yeah. Like he, it's exactly the, all yeah. the frustration and anger he has coming out. Yeah. And Mick Foley is good at, at doing promos like that. Just look at his days when he was Mankind and Cactus Jack, man. He was fucking great at doing that. So obviously it's going to be intense. It's a very heated argument. Um, I love that intensity. Sammy basically call it like it is and looks like he's very, very close to jumping brands now. Yeah. After this, I really think it's going to happen. I really, I love it. Sammy Zayn would be a top star on SmackDown. I think WWE actually yeah. sees that. So they're playing this feud right. He says, I need um, to be saved from you. I need to be saved from seeing Braun Strowman on fucking TV, man. <laughs> I can't get behind this guy when you play, put him up against fucking guys like R-Truth and Sammy Zayn who are not going to beat him. You can't do an underdog story with R Truth. That's not gonna fucking happen. You need a guy, some big. You know, we need we need the big show. You know what? You know who needs to be, he needs to be there? Roman Reigns. Feed that fucker to Braun Strowman. <laughs> do an underdog story with him. I don't give a fuck. At least Roman Reigns is away from the main title picture where he doesn't need to be right now. Why isn't Braun Strowman compete for the U.S. title? Clearly, he's shown how fucking dominant he is. Why the fuck is he not facing Roman Reigns? He should face Roman Reigns for the U.S. title. Why the fuck not? I don't get this. This is like terrible ass, but this is garbage booking. Raw is garbage booking. So then we it's get, supposed to be the flagship show, and it just yeah, sucks. So instead, we get Owens versus Reigns. Yeah, great. Fuck, that's exactly what I wanted. Roadblock. <laughs> they greatest just made a view on Earth. Threat of Jericho, Owens, and Rollins. Yeah, they should have, but no, they didn't. What the fuck is Seth Rollins going to do with the pay-per-view? Face Jericho. Nah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, got a cruiserweight match. Cedric Alexander versus Tony Nese. Cedric Alexander's hometown. From Char- I didn't know he was from Charlotte, but... Uh, and typical WWE. Yep. Buries him in his own fucking town. We even had Cedric City chants. That was great. But, but Tony was- Nese doesn't even get an entrance on a fucking three-hour show. <laughs> How do you not get... No wonder 205 Live is happening, man. How the fuck do you not get an entrance on a three-hour show? Cut a commercial time in half. And the, the show cru- us an entrance. And the cruiserweight matches they give us on Raw are pathetic. Yeah, and we got Alicia Fox watching backstage. So we look. We now know what Alicia Fox is doing. She's not dead. She's just fucking falling in love for... Cedric she completely Cedric. forgot about the women's division. Said, fuck that shit. I'm going to go for Cedric Alexander because he's such a hot commodity. And fuck my career. I'd rather be watching this dude. Yeah, All right, like, great, Alicia like Fox. Fucking uh, way to fuck up the women's division even more. That's great, guys. But the cruiserweight matches on Raw are awful. Yeah. They don't give them they the proper bear, time. And they bury Cedric Alexander. And they don't give them any storyline behind their matches. Like, they just happen. Why is everybody continuing to bury and body people in their home fucking town? What's the what's the deal with that? Does Mr. McMahon get a fucking hard on for burying people? Oh, oh you're from here? Oh, you're going to lose tonight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, think he, I think he loves that. I think he, I think he gets fucking high off that. Whatever. So... Sasha Banks for Charlotte Women's Championship Part 1. Well, you know why Part 1 after we're done reading this. So here we go for the 900th time this fucking year on Monday Night Raw for the Women's Championship. God, did I not really care when I started watching this. As much as I want to, I did not give a shit. Not only was there two parts to this fucking match, for God's sakes, I just didn't, I couldn't get behind it. I wanted to, but I'm like, they should have saved this for the pay-per-view, but they didn't. They have to rush things because, you know, for a three-hour show, we have to rush everything on Monday Night Raw. That makes sense. Way to go, guys. 
Anyways, into the match. There's a quick brawl around the ring. Actually, pretty intense brawl around the ring. I loved it. Um, and we get a fucking double count out. Are you serious? A double count out? That's how the, the feud's going to end. Yeah. One thing I loved. The 10 counts are continuing. Yes. <laughs> the 10 chants are still going on. <laughs> we're in a different... We're in a Charlotte away from Canada. And the 10 chants are continuing. I love it. I hope that continues. Um... I think Ty Dillinger is going to be at the Royal Rumble 100%. I think he's going to be the 10th entrant. I'm I'm going <laughs> along with that prediction. Uh, the one thing I, I want to point out here, the ref fucked up. I caught it. I don't know if you anyone else caught it out there. The ref counted. They're brawling. on it. It's like the ref was waiting for Charlotte to do a certain spot, but he counted eight twice in a row. He's like, eight. Then he like waited for like five seconds and went, Eight. <laughs> Like, and then he stopped counting. Yeah. And then Cole's like, oh, he's going to let them play on, I guess. <laughs> and out comes Mick Foley after double count out. He says he won't let the match or rivalry end like that. God, I hope this is the end when he says that. <laughs> I don't want to see this suit happen again. I don't want to see a fucking last rematch at Roadblock. Please, please not let it happen. Um, he says it'll end in more historic fashion. No DQ, no count out, false count anywhere in the main event. Okay, that's all right. I can get behind that. That should have been from the get-go, though. Not fucking two parts. So we'll get into part two. We'll talk about it right now. This is the main event. Uh, really, really good match, actually. The part, the second part of this was awesome. I liked it. Um, the good use of brawling around the ring. Brawling all over the place. Um, the announce table. Good use of weapons with the kendo stick. Fucking Sasha just baseball swinging the shit out of Charlotte with that thing, man. Fucking broken half. A lot of ECW chants. Um, Charlotte did the jump off the announce table. Yep, yeah, the woman got a lot of time here. I love this. The, this definitely blew blew the Hell in a Cell match out of the water. They got a lot of time here, uh, a lot of good spots. That again, that announce table spot with the moonsault that was done really nice. Both uh, superstars executed it perfectly. Uh, the match ends. They go up into the crowd on the non TV side, where Sasha uses the railing to apply the bank statement. <laughs> Like, Jesus Christ. It looked bad for Charlotte. Yeah. And Sasha won? <laughs> what? <laughs> They're playing hot potato. <laughs> we kind of predicted that to happen. <laughs> oh, my God. Jeez, the woman's t- is the woman's title a fucking hot potato or is it a hot potato right now? Like I couldn't even get excited for it. And it's your girl. <laughs> That's uh, You're hearing here first, guys. It's sad. When this guy is the biggest Sasha fan I ever fucking known, or I ever like I ever know right now, and he's not excited about his girl winning it for the third time. No, oh, because it's just bringing the prestige down to the title, but it, they just keep throwing it yeah. back and forth between two now, people. Now, this is going to be very corporate. You can agree with me or not. The SmackDown Women's title right now is looking more prestigious than I the would, Raw one. I would agree. Because they're not playing. They're not going to play hot potato with it. If Alexa wins tomorrow, guarantee she keeps that thing till WrestleMania. Hundred percent. I just, I just want this feud to be over yeah. with. So good match, but now wrong what, ending. Now what? Are they gonna have a rematch of Roadblock and is Charlotte gonna win it back and keep her? Yeah, like I'm gonna play fucking hot potato again. Shit! Oh, January here, take the title. Oh shit! It's February. Oh, give me the title. Oh, <laughs> like god damn, a terrible book. If they, that's what it seems like. Raj is trying to do this to get like the viewership rating yeah. up by just and switching the title back and forth, back and the forth. The only people that gave a, a real big fuck were people at the arena because like, oh shit, yeah, we paid good money. Now we saw a title change chance. People at home are going, what the fuck did I just see? Why is the title? Everyone on Twitter is like, why the hell is the title changing here? Everyone on Twitter was pissed about this. They both shouldn't be three time champions right now. No, it, it's poorly done. And that's why SmackDown's division is so much better from yeah. top to bottom. Because it's an actual division. It's yeah. not just two people. Yeah. Where's Bailey? Where's Nia Jax? Where, we know where Alicia Fox is. Fucking Google eyes for where's Cedric Summer Alexander. Ray? Where's mean, Emelina? Where's- yeah, when's she debuting? The longest premiere ever. But apparently coming soon now out of tonight. <laughs> Again, coming soon. Uh, but speaking of parts. <laughs> Enzo vs. Rusev part two this week. Oh my god. Yay, how fucking original. I thought it would at least be Cass versus Rusev. No, Genzo. They were going to save that for Roblox. The best part, though, was the promo before. Yep. Uh, <laughs> the whole, now she knows how I'm doing thing. <laughs> and thinking about, uh, now she's thinking about a certified G stuffing her turkey. <laughs> I was like, he's allowed to say that? That's like the most savage comments I've heard out of Enzo ever. 
That was fun. I was like, you no. have to go back and, and watch that. Yeah, if you guys missed that, literally go watch the. And then the worst beforehand. part was Summer Ray after tweeted. She goes, "It's not like it's not stuffing a turkey. It's more like stuffing roast beef." Oh, <laughs> <What>? like. <laughs> It, it, it quickly got deleted. Yeah. Sasha, like, quoted it and said, Savage Ray or something. like <laughs> Savage Ray. <laughs> it was, like, the fucking the oh, biggest savage tweet man. I've ever heard. I guess it's where Summer Ray is now. She just yeah. demoted to tweeting. She's demoted to tweeting because her neck's never going to heal. I, I think she has a bad neck injury. That's going to suck, man. Um, into the match. Yes, another quick match. Low blow this time. Rusev being fucking pissed off at, at Enzo for talking about his package, so I guess it makes sense. I do see the irony him. there. <laughs> yeah, uh, I cannot get behind this feud. It, it's going to be Cass versus. Rusev I hope the Roblox. Ba- Roblox match is actually the end of the line, and that Enzo and Cass can finally start getting back in the tag team title yeah. picture. I honestly think that this is going to be one of those. This Roblox match will be one of those matches that next year on the network when they start replaying from the year before, years before, they're going to replay this match and be like. Oh, that, that was a fucking match? Enzo versus Rusev? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally. It's going to be one of those matches because, like, it happens every time now there's a pay-per-view in the network. They start showing old pay-per-views. I'm like, what the fuck? That was a match? Remember, what was it? Ryback All right, versus... Right, Ryback versus... Uh, God, who was it? It was a Rusev, yeah. Ryback versus Rusev. I'm like, that fucking happened last year, TLC? And Eric Rowan versus... They, they said Eric Rowan faced Big Show in a chairs match, or a... Uh, in a stairs match, I was like, "When did that happen?" I don't even remember that. I don't remember. It's probably because it was probably a terrible match. Oh god! You just think about Eric Rowan and Big Show in a stairs match. That would have been one of our worst matches of the year if we had a known man. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so some quick notes: we had a backstage segment with your boy Mark Henry. With this some, was actually kind of funny. Tyus O'Neill. I did laugh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I forget what they did, but I was laughing. It was funny. And then Mark Henry shoved him. He's like, yeah. "Get the hell off me! You don't touch me like that." And then Titus, so Titus Mark Henry like, spot for the week. There he is. Titus O'Neil was like, "I should have been the star of that movie." And then he touches. <laughs> oh yeah, they're Mark talking Henry. about Mark Henry's uh, horror movies and star in yeah that Titus. little little uh, strip club uh, security scene. Which, uh, you know what? I'll see it just for Mark Henry. I don't care. I love horror movies, so I'm going to see that regardless. I'm going to love when it, I'm going to mark up like, "Yo, Mark Henry, <laughs> the world's strongest slam." <laughs> Wear my World Hall of Pain shirt for when I go to yeah. see that. And another quick note, as I said before, Emelina is still premiering soon. Bongus premiere. Not of all yet, time. but still premiering soon. So, um, Rich Swan and Noam Dar have a cruiserweight match. Kendrick is on commentary. So, basically, this is basically a, promo, a promo match for their uh, title match at 205 yeah, Live. Kendrick, and he's yeah. just losing it on Byron Saxton. God, that, like, I couldn't concentrate on the match because these guys are fucking talking and literally was getting annoying. Um, no Dar, very underrated though. If nobody sees it, he's a really good cruiserweight he's for only that 23 division. Twenty three years old. Yeah, it's they have Rich Swan, twenty four, twenty five. Like their guys in the cruiserweight division are young, young. So these guys have a long way to go with this division. I'm really excited for that. Um, besides the commentary, not paying attention to this match, it was a really good match. I found um, good back and forth action. Good Huge play. kick by Swan for the win. That fucking finishing move he has with that back kick. Yeah. Whew! Making him look strong for his two hundred five match. Yeah. But the cruiserweight matches on Raw just don't make sense. It's not no. what it's not what the cruiserweight division's about. No, they don't give him enough time. They don't give him any storyline. Yep, it's bad. So I'm, I'm happy there's two hundred five now. So another thing happens on Raw, and at the beginning, when I first seen it, like my fr- eyes, first laid eyes, I'm like, oh, here we fucking go. What is this? A bar scene? Like, what the fuck are we gonna watch now? Ends up being actually pretty <laughs> funny, actually, I and I that. actually got behind it. And guess what? fucking he- heel face whatever turn you want to call it here I actually like Cesaro and Sheamus as a tag team <laughs> I think it, uh, if they can continue to do shit like this I think I can get behind it because yeah, they, were both, they yeah. for one Ross slacking in tag teams right now so I think Cesaro and Sheamus I think Cesaro could get a benefit I know we want him to see you go to Smackdown and get you know a main title picture yeah. soon but you know what maybe I actually he might benefit from yeah. actually being rel- rel- credible in the yeah. tag team I mean, people picture. loved him as a tag team wrestler when he was with Kid. Like people loved him with that. Yep. So maybe he's one of those. Maybe you know what we, we're we're looking at it the wrong way. Maybe he's better as a tag team wrestler. We don't know. So I know we want to see him at the main title picture once, and I think it'll eventually happen. But Cesaro, right now, I think Cesaro and Sheamus could actually work. And Sheamus isn't doing sh- fuck all right now, so yeah, it makes sense for him to yeah for um, him to do it. Yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? I can't remember. Oh, the bar scene. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we got totally got sidetracked there. They, uh, Cesaro and Sheamus, though, I love it. No, um, 
they, they first start talking about how <laughs> they were making fun of each other's drinks. Yeah. And like some like <laughs> random goon comes up. Yeah, these two, <laughs> God, some fat looking rich wannabe guy chirps Seamus. And then some Wyatt reject bimbo starts making fun of Cesaro. And the whole bar starts laughing at them both. And then Se- Seamus and Cesaro as a team beat the crap out of fucking everybody. everybody they just the start bar. throwing everybody around, punching people left and right, grabbing beer glasses and smashing them. Obviously fake, you know, breakable glasses, you know. Then he throws the one guy through the one wall. It, but it was a, it was a fake wall. A fake wall. Because <laughs> you can see the bar on the other side. <laughs> it's like, oh, another bar right beside yeah. the wall? It was one of those fake walls oh, that they put God. up. <laughs> and the other bar just like chilling, yeah. like whatever. And then they have a Guinness. Uh, yeah, they after. have a drink together. Yep. So they're officially partners now, I guess. I guess. Well, you know what? I can get behind this. I, I'm slowly intriguing me, surprisingly. Slowly. Maybe WWE wants this to work. Maybe it'll be like the whole Team Hell No I mean, thing. Yeah, after all, they need teams. That I can get behind it. I can get behind this if after a new day, finally, you know, beat Axel and whatever. Uh, Axel. Axel. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Was, or, no. Oh, demolition. D- Demolition's record. God, as soon as they beat their record, I think Cesaro and Sheamus could be tag team champions. I think that'd be do good. That'd be too good for the division. I mean, we give that hype factor. Yeah. That pop that they'll get. Yeah. So we'll move on to Paul Heyman interview. Uh, says that him and Brock got uh, screwed. Uh, screwed. I guess they screwed up. That's yep. right. Basically, and took Goldberg lightly. Um, some swearing. I love that. Uh, involving Heyman. They bleeped it out, obviously. He says, after the first spear, Brock cracked his ribs. I don't know if that's a legit injury or not, or this is just part of storyline. Um, uh, but he couldn't breathe and that's how he lost. So Paul Heyman basically blaming it out on the cracked ribs, you know, whatever. Uh, Paul Heyman was actually tearing. So this is, uh, this is how good of promo work Paul Heyman do. He was actually <laughs> putting legit tears into it. Um, good guy. he says it's the worst defeat and it was embarrassing says it put Brock in the thought process of something to prove and says that could be dangerous for anybody to get in his way and we're going to see a different side of Lesnar. Um, that reveal then reveals that Brock will be in the Royal Rumble match itself. So just like we predicted that he's going to be in there, he's going to be in there. So different side of Brock is going to be interesting. Uh, probably not. Probably going to be the same fucking Brock Lesnar we've always seen. I don't expect anything different, but probably just a more intense Brock Lesnar. He's probably going to be pissed off. He's got to come back. He's going to be pissed off as all fucking hell. Charge the ring and start beating the crap out of Goldberg. It's going to be nuts. Oh, yeah. I don't know what to expect from that. But they are hyping that Lesnar and Goldberg are both going to be in the Rumble now at yeah. Alamo it's Dome. Boosting it up, man. It's boosting just, it up. It's trying good. to make it seem like, I like it. you know, there's two major guys that are going to be in the Rumble match. Yeah. So they be gotta sell tickets somehow. Yeah, and that's a, that's a prime wave again. And it, hopefully, we, as, as much as we hate Vince McMahon, yeah. his decision making—he's a smart businessman. And this he proves it what, right he here. He knows what, especially in a place like that. And it's all about tickets. the money. And if the other rumored match is going to be Taker versus Styles for the WWE Fuck, title, man. then I, be a whole I don't know if the Rumble. I got to check if the Rumble sold out already. It has to be. They had to have sold out already, man. But if you if have not, those, those two like. You know, big things that could sell out. Yeah. Uh, so move on, Raw. The New Day faces the club for the tag team titles. This was stupid. <laughs> See, the women's title shouldn't have changed hands, and the tag, tag team, team title should have changed, changed hands. hands. <laughs> but no. Still don't like the Sheep win last week, too. So going into this match, I would have loved to have seen the club win. Actually. Like, actually win this match. Uh, Look what they've done to the club. I know. The guy, the, every <laughs> week. go from a dominating team in New Japan, and they're still dominating over there with Kenny Omega, to this bullshit. So, the New Day come out, talk about their longest reigning, coming close, and last week's win. Uh, the club interrupt, and like, God, please let this be an interruption that leads to a title win. <laughs> please let them win. At this point, it's like, oh, come on, please, club, just beat them. I don't even care about the record anymore. <laughs> it's bad when I don't care about the record anymore. <laughs> the match was okay. Just a what the fuck finish. Like, my lord. If there was ever a way to make the club look stupid, it was right here. Woods has a dirty roll up on Anderson. Then Gallows is right there and clearly is in within distance to knock it, but he like purposely goes big show slow under the ropes and then does it slow enough that the referee does a three count. And it just it looks so bad. I'm like, the club gets job and fuck over once again. 
Can they please get traded to SmackDown? Please. If there's ever a team that gets needs to get traded over there with Sami Zayn, the club needs to go over there. So they can be reunited with Styles. That would make more sense. I would love that. Then Styles has some goons behind him to help him do his dirty work. It would be better than what they're doing now. Clearly they don't know how to use them properly on Monday Night Raw. No, not at all. And like we always say, they need that third member. They need that leader. Yeah. And AJ Styles is the third guy. It's pissing me off, man. Like, they, they shouldn't be... <laughs> Oh, God. If, if, if you guys have watched Gallows Anderson before and know about their dominance in New Japan, you are just as pissed off as we are right now. <laughs> God. If you have any questions about the trades, save those for the Sunday Night yeah, Heat podcast. Yeah, Sunday Heat tomorrow, guys. Tune in for that. So move on. The SmackDown review. I actually got to get my Raw rating. I didn't tweet it out my Raw rating this week. I fucked up, guys. Kyle Master account, yeah. I fucked up. So my Raw rating this week, I'm giving it a 4.5 out of 10. And that's uh, I know it's a low score, but you know what? As much as the up, the four point five goes to the Jericho highlight reel at the beginning of the show, uh, the women's part two of the match, and pff, I don't know what do I give them that rest of the score to the 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 Cesaro Sheamus pub scene and a little bit of Paul Heyman. So you know I'll boost it up. I'll give it a five point five out of ten this week. How about that? Uh, I'll give it a five this week. Yeah, it, it, it was mediocre. I mean, again, like you said before. We can't get behind Raw. At all. At all. I don't even want to watch it. Honestly, the only reason yeah. I'm watching it right now is for the your girl. I mean, yeah, that too. And your girl. Yeah, for Sasha. But I, I only watch it for... this week because I'm tired of this fucking feud. Yeah, I hope they do something better with your girl because I actually have to watch because my, my boy Kevin Owens, this is always something different with him every week. And now that they're teasing the breakup with Jericho, I'm pissed that they've included Roman Reigns. But you know what? I have to <laughs> We have to, again, like you said, we have to watch it for podcast purposes. So... And the SmackDown Blue brand, Team team Blue. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Here comes the money. What an opening. What an Loved opening it. segment. Loved it. And we start off with the women's contract signing for TLC. Um, I would have loved this to be an actual TLC match, though, uh, yeah. instead of it, uh, what we get after. Um, but whatever. Alexa versus Becky Lynch. I'm really looking forward to this match. Um, both girls look absolutely sexy, by the way, this week. In My clothes. Lord. Wow. Just got to point that out. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, Alexa, I I don't know, man. It, if you told me who's the best woman right now, like, that's trending, I would say it's Alexa without even being biased. Yes. Like, I mean, she's just a good heel. She is Unreal. a fantastic heel. She has blown away what she was able to do on NXT. I know. Because like, she was literally, not given she, a shot on it. Yeah, because she was Blake, Blake and Murphy's Murphy. manager. Like, she was not able to she do anything. She's a phenomenal hero from her mannerisms yep. to her facial expressions. Yeah, she's the complete everything. She's the complete package as a heel. And I, I and love I, it. I, don't, I know yeah. I got my girl Carmella on SmackDown, but I'm telling you right now, I love Alexa Bliss as well. Not as much as, you know, I love Carmella because I got to, you know, yeah. we got to have our girls. Yeah, but um, and Becky is still cringeworthy with, when it comes to her <laughs> face. And her promo work is just bad. Oh, my gosh. She needs to get better, man. What do you think about a Becky heel turn eventually? I think that would be okay. I think because right now the, the face shit is not working. Our, uh, she, buddy, it's our buddy JD had a funny impre- or, uh, prediction that they like they have this storyline go on about the whole Survivor Series thing, and then they reveal that Becky was actually the one to attack Nikki Bella oh, because Nikki okay. was named the team captain when Becky is the champion. Yeah. Okay, I see that. That's actually a really good prediction. I like I that. I like that a lot. And I think Becky would benefit from a heel yeah. turn, to be honest. Yeah. I think she's getting really stale as a face unless she you know, starts to pick it up a bit. I'm not- I actually really like that prediction. I hope that that actually happens and we see that. But I think, again, I just think Becky Lynch could have done a Becker, better job this week. Becker job. Better job. <laughs> um, then they start to the brawl. There's the one turnbuckle spot, and they're up, and it looks like uh, uh, Alexa is going to get suplexed through the table. No, backplexed. Backplexed. And then just rakes her eyes or something and, and then pushes her. her. <laughs> Becky goes through the table. I'm like, yep. ow. The, the Raw women couldn't do. Yeah. <laughs> couldn't figure out how wow. to do that. Uh, I wonder if Dana O'Brien said anything about ta- that on Talking Smack. <laughs> That would have been like the perfect spot yeah, to so say. She went through the the contract table, which yeah, was just a regular damn, table. What a spot, a man! Part, uh, That's table. crazy. That's Later, great. we find out it is going to be a tables match at TLC. Yeah, and Becky's playing off this injury angle about how she has some rib injuries now from oh, that table yeah. spot. So maybe, she's, maybe she's yeah, turn yeah, heel. She's to, Only heels like to do that, man. Uh, she's she, um, she's Becky Balboa, you know. She's Becky Balboa, but. 
fuck. I, I would like Becky better. I think it suits her more to be in a chasing role, like chasing yeah. the title. Yeah. And have, give it to Alexa, have Alexa run with it as a heel, and have Becky chase her for the title instead. <laughs> Sadly say, win it at WrestleMania. Sure, Maybe, like, I mean, it kind of would make sense, man. You look at it this way. Becky basically uh, lost at WrestleMania last year. It's a crushing defeat for her. She wants to yeah. at least win at WrestleMania. And, oh, you know, don't really worry. Good. You know, you know, Nikki Bella is going to get a title shot. Oh, yeah. you know <laughs> She'll win it. That's going back on her. Don't gotta, worry. She's going to be a 15 time champion like John Cena. They're just saving, they're just keeping it warm for <laughs> Nikki Bella right now until she God. decides to actually win it. I hope not. So move on. Kalisto and Dolph Ziggler teamed up oh to face Baron God. Corbin this was in the such Miz. A stupid match. So out of the bo- out of both feuds, surprisingly, I can get behind Kalisto and Corbin because they only had two weeks till TLC to build it. Well, they but were feuding before that. Why do we? They intensified to, the feud again. Why did they need to have this feud again? But it doesn't make any sense. I'm liking it. It looks like it's going to be the end of it, so I can accept it. It's going to be the end of days. <laughs> Miz and Ziggler, however. Ah, uh, really good feud before SummerSlam, and I guess continued it afterwards since Ziggler didn't even compete at Survivor Series, so they're continuing that feud. Uh, you know what? Maybe this is just going to be the end for both these guys. It is going to be the end. They, they've already stated that this is the last time yeah. they're going to be facing each other. So, um, the match was mm-hmm. just... Into the match. Ugh. Decent. I guess it was decent. The ending was... St- ending was bad. A lot of... I mean, I love the outside spots. Which is nice. I always love my outside spots. Corbin hits Kalisto in the back with a chair randomly, and it causes the DQ. I'm like, oh, that's Such fantastic. Stupid ending. But setting up, I guess, you know, it's I guess it just plays into their chairs match at TLC. Great. If I didn't care about this feud already, they make it the most boring match possible, a chairs match. I'm literally just hitting the fast forward button in my mind. I'm like, hey, just fucking beat him already. I just don't want to see him feud with Kalisto anymore because I love Corbin Baron Corbin. Needs to do I hate something it. Else. I hope something happens. He gets traded along with I think, Miz. I, I think it would be a good feud next Corbin versus Ambrose. I think that would be a good. I think that'd be crazy. Feud. Yeah, I like that. Note here: Randy Orton still looks weird. Okay, they had a backstage promo with the with Randy Orton, Bray Wyatt. Orton still looks weird. It's as Wyatt weird, family. It's, but I like it. If that makes sense. Yeah, like it, I like it, but it's weird. It's like we. It's like we have to nitpick. I'm like, oh, we love this, but take the fucking sweater off and put like a raggedy old sweater yeah, on. Why or can't? He, why does he have to still wear the same Viper? Why thing? can it be that sweater? But like, make it like old and dirty and ripped apart, and yeah, put like give, draw give like red sweater cross the eyes on the ven- on the snake or something. Like, do something scary. Like, stop making wear a bread. Looks like he just went over to the stand and grabbed the new sweater and put it on. All he does is put the hood up. Ooh. Yeah, ooh, he's a wife and remember he put his hood on. Or give him a mask. Give him one of the fucking masks. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine Randy Orton with a Wyatt mask on. Yeah, yeah. See, <laughs> like, oh, he just it just looks weird. We love it, but it just looks weird. So move on. Carmella was supposed to face someone. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to the, her match with Nikki. It's so fucking intense right now. Carmella cuts a promo before the match mm-hmm. on Cena and tells oh, yeah. him that tells him about what she's gonna do to Nikki, saying she's gonna smack her Bella twins so hard they'll be on her back. I love it, savage <laughs> as fuck. Love it. Also saying she'll beat them, beat the sense out of her so bad that she'll forget about the whole wedding ordeal. <laughs> If you watch Soul Divas, we all know John Cena does not want to get married right now. <laughs> I love that Carmella's bringing up, incorporating all this stuff. That this, they is talk about. this is great. I love it because it intensifies the feud. You need to break the fourth wall sometimes to make a feud actually legit and pay attention to. Makes people care about it. Yeah. This is a great secondary non-title feud. Yeah, it is. This like, is very underrated feud right now. This is why SmackDown's Women's Division, as we and always say, is better. I think Carmella. I don't think Carmella's getting the love that she deserves. No, from the man. crowd. because no. she is a fake. Like I mean. Both of them look really good. Alexa and Carmella, yeah. since being called up, they have both been great heels. Yeah, they've literally been. I'd say it's. We're not going to give it away anyway, but they definitely be considered both of them for woman of the year. Even though they've only been there for a couple months, I know it's it's crazy. Carmella but they've done that a very good heel. Yeah, they, they both and, came from the same grounds. In NXT being the manager role of tag teams. Now look at them now as singles competitors. They're unreal. I would like them to continue the whole Carmella and John Cena thing. Like maybe Carmella. Like tries to like get at John Cena. Oh uh, yeah, to, yeah. Like you know, I don't. I'm not gonna say like go to the, go all the way to like sexual things. You know what I mean? But like, <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. She tries to like flirt with Cena here and there and say like you know just to jab try to get the, the, yeah. the attention onto her away from Nikki. I can, I can see that. Yeah, they can I, do I think something these like two complement each other really well, and I'm actually looking forward to their no DQ match. Yeah. So Nikki comes out, starts to brawl with uh, 
Carmella adding more intensity to it. Apparently, according to Twitter, Carmella got a black eye here, and I she saw did. the I saw the I spot. Saw her Instagram the photo. She still yeah. posted every day. She's like, "I'm gonna hit you back for this, Nikki." And yeah, she's got a big. I saw the spot. Shiner. It was uh, the one part. Where it looked like Carmella wasn't supposed to go down a certain way, and Nikki kind of was just playing too intense. Almost, I'm not trying to blame her, but it, she had to make it look intense. But the knee came up, and it caught her in the face. I'm like, oh yeah, there it is. Yep. Whatever, you know that's. It, it, it just adds more. It, it makes the feud look better. Look, yeah. there is a real legit injury. Like it, it adds to the fire. And it's a go home show, so you can't expect a lot of wrestling from a go home show before no, a pay per view. No, but they did a, a good job with setting up that that uh, match I'm itself. Actually It'll really be looking a forward no to DQ. both oh, women's God. matches. Good on SmackDown for actually using yeah. other women. And look at that. Both women's matches are not normal matches. They both have stipulations. One's a no DQ, and one is a table or yeah, tables match. And people actually can get behind mm-hmm. a secondary woman's feud that doesn't have mm-hmm. to do with the title and switching it around every two minutes. I just hope that at TLC, the tables match lives up to expectation. It's not a shitty table spot, like the table falls down or something. It's not. I just hope it's not crappy. I hope someone actually goes through it. Yeah. Someone needs to go through it. It's got to put their body on the line. You're a wrestler. You're a WWE superstar. I got to do it. I think they will. So we get to the Ambrose Asylum TLC edition. <laughs> he his, brings his set is terrible. <laughs> it's so generic. He has like just a Bristol board. Yeah, with, and like, an, Ambrose Asylum. A white arrow. He's like, yeah, I had to get. Sorry guys, I'd get my area rug. I got to get it all cleaned up here. <laughs> it's been a while since the last Ambrose Asylum. He's, Bring yeah. down his first guest, fucking James Ellsworth. He starts making fun of his boots. He's like, man, you're, uh, you're, you have a full-time <laughs> contract now. Can you get some new boots? Best part, JBL calling him a turtle without a shell. <laughs> he always calls him that now. Turtle without a shell. Uh, Ellsworth talks about what he's done to get there. Yada, yada, yada. We've heard the same shit, Ellsworth. We don't give a shit. Ambrose asks Ellsworth who he's rooting for at TLC. Uh, Ellsworth says Styles, And only because he wants to face Styles for the title instead of Ambrose. He'd like to face Styles again. Out comes AJ Styles, talks about Ellsworth and Ambrose, says it's Ambrose's fault for him losing to Ellsworth all the time and demanding respect. Uh, says he will beat Ambrose up using every ladder, every chair, and every table in the arena on Sunday. Ambrose fires back, saying that he's... Uh, AJ Styles basically is so easy to figure out by watching him the last couple of weeks, so he knows he can beat AJ Styles. Ambrose starts beating up... or Styles starts beating up on Ambrose and Ellsworth. JBL... <laughs> It's calm here. Jibo says, he looks like a, a deformed turtle. Goodbye, turtle. <laughs> As it gets thrown out the ring. Fantastic. Uh, Styles chair spot with Ellsworth look really painful. He likes put him down, like head head on the ground where the, the mats are. And his feet, and his feet again, along the, the, ropes. the ropes. And then just fucking smacked the shit out of his, his back, back with a chair. That looked crazy. And then, and then I couldn't wow. believe this happened. The crazy ass fucking spot. Styles clash. From the half steps to the ground. <laughs> That's Ellsworth, something I do in a video game, okay? Ellsworth got buried. He got in body bag. <laughs> Zipped up the body bag. <laughs> bye bye, Ellsworth. They, they did bring out the stretch yeah, for him. I think he's done. <laughs> like, he was in a neck brace the last two weeks. He's going to be in a fucking wheel. He's going to be the, the whole Zack Ryder thing wheelchair, leg up, and the neck brace. <laughs> So Hopefully this keeps him away from the yeah, title they're picture. They're playing it off as he's not going to be there on Sunday to interfere at any point. Good, good. And I hope he just this. I know Imagine now he's he got a title out. shot though. This is what sucks. He still gets this. I hope they're. I was hoping they would just get rid of that this week, and they didn't. But I don't know. I think something's got to happen. Like maybe Ellsworth turns on Dean and becomes Styles' little like henchman dude. Yeah, maybe. I hope so. Or something. Or maybe he joins the club. Maybe the club comes over and they have like four members. There yeah, you go. But Styles just has like his little stooge gremlin yeah. that like runs around the ring for him. But, That'd be great. I mean, how how long is this Ellsworth thing gonna go on for? Like, I don't I'm know. already getting sick of it now. I don't know. I've I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Done. So you guys know Especially what? Especially that he's in the title picture and he's gonna get another title match. It's like Ugh. we gotta see this at least carry on for another couple weeks at least. Yeah. Whenever he comes back from his horrific injury. <laughs> So we got Kane versus. Oh my Speaking of God. fucking dumpster fire, Kane versus Luke Harper. Part another part two match. There you go. Great. We've seen the first one at Survivor Series, and I gotta say, I don't know if that was a that was, that was a dark match for Survivor Series, but we saw it. Yeah, and it was a dump. No, it was a pre-show, and it was, was dumpster fire. Time. Why is Kane still here? Is there honestly no one out there to replace him? There's literally nobody out there right now to replace Kane. Why the fuck does he still need to be on TV? 
Especially against Luke Harper, which we've seen so many times. Can they just fucking call up Samoa Joe? And then at least if he's going to be him. there, at least be an enhancement talent to put other talent over. No, he's losing or he's beating Luke Harper. Yeah, so he beats Luke Harper here. Great. In almost a 10-minute match. <laughs> For I texted you and How I said, he... this match has gone on way too <laughs> long. Way to go creative. You, you had a good show up until this fucking point right here. Give more time to the main event that we're going to talk about after. Get, Why did they have to have this in there? Just take Kane off TV. Put him as a fucking authority for your role as we, Can we love him. Can we bring Corporate Kane back, Corporate please? Kane, please. Hashtag bring Corporate Kane back. Please. <laughs> uh, there needs to be a more corporate role in him. It, I can't see him. I, I hate seeing him wrestle now. I hate it. I'm, I'm hating it. As much lo- as much as I, uh, Kane deserves done. all the respect, I just think there's a time and a place he's done for now. staying off TV, and that's SmackDown, and that's right now. <laughs> so get the fuck off SmackDown, Kane. Get the fuck off, man. If you don't, then I'm going to have to buy one of JD's Get Off My TV t-shirts. I'm going to have to, too. On it. So we'll get into the main event. Uh, Orton and Bray Wyatt versus American Alpha, number one contendership for the SmackDown titles. This was actually a great match. Yeah, I was pissed last week that American Alpha was getting screwed at another opportunity, and I'm still kind of pissed this week. They can still face Slater and Rhino. It, it can be a face versus face. It's allowed to happen, but I can see where everyone else is coming from and giving Bray a finally a title shot and a title opportunity and a possibility a chance at his first title. I think it makes sense because yeah. everyone knows American Alpha will get their shot. They're, they, yeah. <laughs> they're brand new. I, I actually hope it's at WrestleMania now. They need that kind of big pay-per-view to win the title. Yeah, and if Bray and, and Orton, need, this has been fantastic. I thought this was going to be like a two-week thing and then Orton was going to turn on him like, yeah. like Daniel Bryan did. But no. they've they've carried this and they've made two they've, top singles yeah. competitors into a tag team. They've turned it into like Randy a Orton, team. a one-upping Steven, or Steven, <laughs> Luke Harper. <laughs> And it being the one that Bray looks to, too. But I think this is all, again, part of Randy Orton's plan. Yep. He's trying to phase out Luke Harper so Bray has more trust in Randy Orton. And then, right, like that, out of nowhere, the pun intended. Yep. I figured, like, that would happen at WrestleMania or something, leading to a WrestleMania match. Yeah. It's going to be Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. I'm but, calling that. For the time being, I really like them as a tag team. Yeah. So, into the match, I guess, as you said, really, really good match. Jason the, Jordan's like super at the end though, fucking Survivor. We get a Survivor Series deja vu with Harper appearing at ringside. I'm like, oh fuck, the same exact way he did at Survivor Series. Wow, good storybook writing. Oh my lord, they could have done something better than this. I just, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Really tight finish due to Randy Orton helping Bray Wyatt once again. Bray's able to pick up the win. Wow. So Orton and Bray Wyatt are going to face Slater and Rhino I for the titles. I Bray Wyatt finally get a title. He hasn't got a title. None. Yeah. No, none. He doesn't have a singles title. He hasn't ever won uh, the tag, tag team, team titles. Title, nothing. Which I think this will be no the tag team title, title match now. So I'm um, thankfully that Bray, that they're finally starting to c- care about the Wyatt family again. And adding Randy Orton has been a yeah. has been a nice change, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's been an interesting dynamic to this whole Wyatt yeah, family I agree. thing. And I just hope it's not past the point of that people don't care about the Wyatts anymore. Kind of like with Dolph Ziggler, like when he finally got his push again, they're like, I just don't care anymore. Yeah. And I hopefully it sets up a, it sets up maybe a match with AA. Maybe if a doesn't win, but it sets yeah. up a match with them. They, they get a title opportunity and that could be a good match. It could be a good Royal Rumble or maybe at, maybe the pay-per-view before WrestleMania for SmackDown, you have Bray Wyatt and Orton yeah. versus American alpha. And then, you know, maybe they get screwed or something and they have a rematch at WrestleMania. Maybe there's a big tight team turmoil match at WrestleMania. And then that's where American alpha wins. Uh, we'll give um, our predictions later, but yeah. the only other thing I have to say about this match was stupid. Was that Randy Orton was getting cheered more than American <laughs> alpha was. It, it's, the team. it's the casuals. The casuals are all coming out because Randy Orton's back and it looks like he was supposed to be in a part-time role. He's now in a full-time role. He's the casuals that love Randy Orton are back in watching more. It's, it's almost like it was a smart decision by WWE. They, they saw that all the casuals came back when Randy Orton's on TV. Okay, we can't put you as a part-time role, Randy. you got to come back full-time, man. Look at this. Here's some money. You yeah. know, Come back full-time, man. Look at You're getting but cheered. I, I just hate how American Alpha was the face and not getting And they were in casual much. town. I knew they yeah. were going to get fucking cheered. Um, then backstage, Ambrose and AJ Styles brawl to end the show with Rhino and Slater just yelling at them. Rhino and Slater have done nothing with yeah. the titles. They defended Except Rhino once. growing uh, sideburns. There's a that's great. Wow, yeah, that's exact. That's exactly what I wanted them to do. <laughs> they 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 defended the titles once against the Ascension. Wow, <laughs> wow, what a title reign. <laughs> that's crazy. Once in like, and they're probably months. gonna lose it tomorrow. <laughs> what what a title reign. Wow. I don't know. I didn't know what to say about that. But uh, so after SmackDown, I guess I'll get into the ratings. SmackDown ratings. Uh, it's 
So I gave Raw, what, 5.5 this week. Yep. I'll give SmackDown 6. 6 out of 10. I'm SmackDown giving, 1, barely. I'm giving SmackDown... I actually liked SmackDown this week. I'm giving it a 7. Yeah. I, you know, I'll change my mind, too. 6.5. There you go. I got 5.5 actually... for Raw, 6.5 for SmackDown. Because in, and incorporating Talking Smack, too. Like yeah. the, Miz, the Miz was hosting Talking Smack this week as Mike Mizanin. He said, don't <laughs> so, refer to me as The Miz. I'm Mike Mizanin. So he's using his real name? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? So Ziggler came in. They they hyped their feud. And yeah. it was actually really good. I like that SmackDown is making me care about their feuds. Yeah. Going into this pay-per-view that was rushed. What Raw should be doing. It was rushed, but then, like you said, they started it kind of before Survivor Series, so they kind of yeah. had, added a little bit more time. But what can you? Ex- what do you expect from a, a go home show? Yeah. Though there's not going to be yeah. a lot of yeah. like actual wrestling yeah. besides the main event because it was basically an number one yeah. contender match. And, and going what you're saying about that, at least next month we don't have to worry about that because next month is a double brand pay per view, so. and it's at the end of the month. It's and like it's January a Royal Rumble because most of the feuds will be inside the Royal Rumble, so we won't have yeah. to worry about. It. There's going to be like four or three odd matches except the Rumble. So mm-hmm. now SmackDown's going to have like a month and a half. To prepare for a rumble. To prepare for it. So I... So, pre- get prepared, people, for some, you know, slow shows. We've got the holidays coming up. Holiday shows are never good. We just have holiday promoted matches and a bunch of backstage shit. So we're going to get, you know, the Christmas the week Santa of thing. bullshit. We're going to get the New Year's week of bullshit. And then, with the three weeks leading up to the rumble, we'll get... We'll start to pick up again. This, so, this get is, prepared, guys. Don't start tweeting us and saying, oh, fuck, SmackDown was shit this week. Bunch of Santa crap. It's it's, they they do that do. every goddamn year. They you got to prepare down. for it. The, the superstars need a break. I don't even know if we're going to do a... If it's bad, guys, I'm not doing a lowdown show. We'll give our rating on Twitter, but we won't do a lowdown. Like, if it's like, slow, like we're we not. Like we said, we are doing our Slammies the one week, yeah. and uh, we're pre- replacing the lowdown show with the Slammies that week. Yeah. So, and your guys stay tuned for that. It's um, going to be great. So yeah, I'll give SmackDown a six, and it beats okay. Raw this week. Okay. I can get by that. So something that happened sorry, after... Seven. Seven. Ooh. Something happened after SmackDown this week, 205 Live. Uh, I love the intro video and the theme song, by the way. I think it suits them well. Cruiserweights will start. Uh, apparently, will be still working Monday nights, though, for matches and shoot promos for their Tuesday show. So it'll be mostly, uh, there'll probably be one match on Raw, but mostly shoot promos for their Tuesday show. Okay, whatever. I can get behind that. I don't know why. You, uh, I guess I can kind of see why you wouldn't have the shoot promos on SmackDown because you're taking away from the two hour show. Yeah. I guess Raw. And, and I guess they don't have time to showcase everybody on yeah. the one hour show. Yeah. Um, and it's a good way to promote 205 Live. You yeah. can promote it on Raw and say, look, tune in tomorrow after yeah, SmackDown for 205 Live. For it, right? yeah. So I guess it does make sense in some aspects. So yeah, the arena look half full, I guess, due to being at the end of SmackDown. And obviously, the casuals won't stay behind. Obviously, the hardcore fans are going to stay behind. Um, I still think it should be at Full Sail University. Better crowd, in my opinion. Uh, Austin Aries joined Ronaldo and Graves phenomenal. on commentary. Wow. Awesome. He's wearing his glasses. Obviously, he's got this eye injury. And so I guess until his eye injury heals. And they, they, they added an uh, interesting twist to this. Yeah. He said that he is going to be a competitor in mm. the cruiserweight division when he comes back. That's going to be great. Smackdown. But he's also going to be on NXT as well. I think that's great for mm-hmm. Austin Aries that he's going yep. to be that, that top guy to like help elevate the yep. cruiserweight division. I love it. The only thing I can critique here, though, was there's two heel commentators here, Grave and oh, Aries. Grave was actually acting as more of a face. Uh, it, oh, but there it looks like they're like gaining on they're like gaining up on Ronaldo a lot. Yeah, and I'm like, you guys got to slow down with that. You can't have two heel commentators. There's got to be the he, there could be the face, the heel, and like the tweener guy in between. I guess. I guess they were trying to portray that Graves was a tweener because he was yeah. a face for some things and a heel for some other things. Yeah. I liked Austin Aries on commentary as a heel. He was actually yeah. pretty funny. Yeah, um, I liked it too. <laughs> his, his, good, his chime-ins were hilarious. Yeah. It's better than fucking uh, David Otunga's chime-in. Yeah, I don't even know what he is. He's just a, He's just there. Useless. He's just there. No wonder they added Tom Phillips because like, no, maybe they're slowly phasing out David Otunga. You're like, man, just kind of like push your chair. I want to go back All to right, Harvard Law School. <laughs> yeah. um, I liked how the show opened though. Yeah. With all the cruiserweights on the stage, yeah. yeah. But throughout the show, uh, we did get the highlights for certain competitors, as yeah, Noam Dar. I liked how they they announced uh, every yeah. single guy that was going to be competing in the cruiserweight yeah. division. They showed them on stage. Yeah, and the Bollywood Boys loved them. I love them in the cruiserweight classic. Uh, perhaps one going to be a tag team division in the cruiserweight show two hundred five live. Hopefully, um, maybe. we had uh, Gulak and uh, Nice teaming up together. So they, maybe they've done that before. Yeah. Um, 
Mustafa Ali, loved him. He was a huge, that's a huge signing by WWE right there. Same with Graham uh, Metalik. Uh, guys, I remember into the Cruiserweight Classic. Guys, if you haven't seen the Cruiserweight Classic and you like skipped over it, fucking go watch it. There's some like match of the year candidates in that shit, man. There were some great matches in there. But yeah, throughout the show, they highlighted uh, Noam Dar, Grand Metalik, and Lance Dorado with highlight packages. Same with the Bollywood Boys before I like that. their match. They're trying to get people like. They're getting the casuals into it. The guys that are watching at home, the casuals, they're getting them into this 205 Live show and getting to know them. Because they don't want to... Guys will come up and be like, who the fuck's this guy? Yeah, if you want want people to be a fan of certain people on 205 Live, you got to introduce them in this way. And this is the perfect way to do it. As much as it was mainly promos on 205 Live, it's the the first week. (laughs) What What do you expect? So the first match was Bollywood Boys versus Drew Gulak and Tony Nese. The Bollywood Boys did not get a good reaction because they were in North Carolina. Shocker. But I think think their gimmick can get over... And they're good. They're unreal. Uh, but Gulak and Nice are not signed yet, but I guess they will be for sure. They're saying WWE does not want to God, lose both Drew, of them. Drew Gulak is a brawler. Yeah. He is like... He's intense. Yeah. He's an intense cruiserweight, that's for sure. It brings that like intensity that you need in a cru- You can't just have boring high flyers all the time. Yeah. That's what the cruiserweight division was in the past. There wasn't like a, a brawler type guy. There wasn't like certain... Like, there are certain people in this division that have certain traits that are good yeah. for the division. Unique um, traits. Yeah. So a nice tribute video from the Bollywood boys showcasing their history. Smart idea for casuals, like we said. Um, they didn't um, they didn't need to give Nice and Gulak an entrance with them. Like, oh, okay, whatever. But it looks like uh, these guys will be a team too. Really, really good match. Good back and forth action with this one. Uh, Bollywood boys picked up the victory with their double super kick finisher. Um, yeah, that looked brutal. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it, it's so basic, but you need you know it's good like that. Yeah, the way like the double where they do it at yeah. the same time, it was good. Uh, uh, Brian Kendrick was backstage. He got interviewed by Tom Phillips asking about Rich Swan, saying he should be scared of TJ Perkins too, who appears behind Brian Kendrick. Uh, TJ says he doesn't know how his title match will affect TJ because he still deserves a rematch. Then simply says good luck to Brian Kendrick. So. And Brian Kendrick says they made 205 live yeah. for him. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, Kendrick. <laughs> Man will plan. Uh, Jack Gallagher versus Araya Davari happens. Uh, Davari is the uh, sibling. I think it's sibling yeah, or it's his co- brother. It's his brother of uh, Kazu Davari, if you guys remember, Muhammad Hassan's manager. And also he had a little singles run on the ECW show when it came back in 2008. Uh, Davari isn't signed yet by WWE either, but I think he will be soon. He's a good piece of talent. Uh, regardless of what people think about him. Gallagher, interesting type of wrestler. I like his uniqueness. Um, again, a lot yeah, of people he, were behind him. Mm-hmm. Like I've read on Twitter and stuff that they, they like his unique style, the way he mm-hmm. kicks out Very things. gentleman-like in his ring style. Yeah. And uh, do not expect a lot of high-flying moves from him. I remember no. him in the Cruiserweight class. He's a very like showman, showmanship grappler, if I can put it that yeah. way. And he's more he, the yeah. way he, a comic style. He's yeah, a comic style unique showmanship, unique kickouts, yeah. and the way he does moves. Yeah, it's, 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 it's good. You know what? I like it. It's something you you'd see. It's it's like stuff you'd see at a live event, but done in a <laughs> in a gonna, better way on TV. You're gonna remember that though. You're gonna yeah. be like, you know, who was that guy that did that? You're gonna be like, oh, that was that Jack Gallagher. Guy. Yeah. So like, <laughs> he, it's something that sticks out that you're gonna remember. Yeah, I like that. So end of the match, he ends the match in a very interesting and I guess gentlemanly way. You would say Gallagher wins via drop kick to the head. And that was it. I guess <laughs> a normal move won the match. I mean, it, they said it elsewhere. Like that's guess that's a very gentlemanly way to end the match. Yeah. Whatever. You know what, Jack? Again, as we said, there's gonna be certain guys on the show that bring a certain type of unique aspect to the show, and and their in ring yeah, presence and their in ring style. Ten of the same guys. It's not cares? gonna be a good show. Fucking whatever. It's boring. Same shit. Different different match. So we get into the main event again. We had more showing with. Uh, uh, promo videos. I hope we get more matches later yeah, on. We had we had a pretty emotional promo yeah. for Rich Swan. My God, <laughs> it was really really well done too. Uh, I never knew about this. I never knew Swan's background to this, and I've gained a lot more respect and a lot more love for Rich Swan. Rich Swan is one of my favorites, hundred percent. Not but not in front of Rich or uh, Cedric Alexander. <laughs> no one's gonna be. Uh, he's my boy right now, man. I've loved him since I first seen him in the Cruiserweight Classic. Cedric Alexander is gonna be my number one, but Swan. Well, hundred percent, my number two, hundred percent. Um, Can you handle this? Can you handle Swan this? lost both his parents in his teen years, which is pretty sad. That's, it, it does a lot to someone. Um, and he's only twenty five years old. That's why I didn't know either. That was pretty crazy. Uh, he started to go down a dark road after he lost his parents, and I guess wrestling saved his life. So, good story behind Swan. Very quality t- 
type uh, pay per view quality type promo uh, for this, uh, and it got you invested. Yeah, it got you invested in you, and it got you invested in also the the Rich Swan character. He's definitely going to be a top cruiserweight. Like, I could see him and Austin Aries in the future having match of the year, or him and TJ Perkins, man. Like or Cedric Alexander, or C- <laughs> Cedric <laughs> Alexander. So the match itself. Really good match. Oh, hear that? Yeah, we had Scott Steiner, Scott Steiner coming in. Coming in. <laughs> uh, really good match. Unreal spots. Unreal reversals. Just this whole match was a complete package. A really, really well done match. Swan even kicking out of the sliced bread, which is freaking insane. Yeah, and the top up. rope sliced yeah. bread. Like they were both on the top rope, and he gave him the sliced. And bread then he, off the he top. kicked out of the the captain's hook as well. It's just nuts. And then Swan won with that fuck that kick Three he kicks. does. Three of those unreal kicks. Wow! Kicks. Yeah, they were unreal awesome. and definitely well deserved after that promo package yeah. alone and where and he's the, come from. The casual Central in North Carolina actually got behind this match. Yeah, unreal. I mean, it, you got to look at it too. It's, there's some hardcore fans in every state. Yeah, and but yeah, the people that look like I could see in the crowd. There's also some casuals. You can pick out the casuals. Yeah, but it's good on them that they yeah. actually got these casual fans invested yeah. in two guys they probably have never heard of before. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I love 205 this week. This was love phenomenal. It. It was great. Can we I, give 205 I'm, a rating. <laughs> I'm we give two or five, right? We give it a, uh, out of five. Out of five? Yeah, I'm giving it four point five out of five. 4. Yeah, we're both agreeing with that. Unreal, man! Just, like I'm so said, excited for the show going yeah, forward. Like now. we said, a little bit more wrestling, but the promos w- were going to be yeah. expected on the first week, so they're not yeah. really going to get a bad grading for that. And you know what? This SmackDown include with two or five live makes it a way better. I'd rather watch that for three hours right now than Raw for three hours. Yeah. And it gives me a good break, like yeah. to the, the second show. I might just stop watching Raw from now on, catch the highlights, and then watch SmackDown 205 Live right through. Raw's awful. Yeah, it is. Um, so, I don't even think, can we include, 205 Live as its own show, but can we even compare it in the Raw and SmackDown? I don't even know. Does it, does it go I think it's its own show. Smackdown? I think it's its own, it's so tough. It's it's tough. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. We'll see how much they incorporate it. Because, I mean, they're they're going to incorporate Raw into it because that's oh, where the shoot promos are yeah. going to come from. Oh, for, for now, we're just going to keep it like an NXT, like a side thing. Yeah. We'll just have to keep it at Raw and SmackDown ratings and yeah. whatever. So, before we get into our TLC predictions, we'll do a quick, uh, I guess we'll do this. Yeah, I'll hit the headline music. Whatever. Right, welcome to WWE headlines, guys. We have a quick three headlines to go over. We want to keep this brief so we can do our TLC predictions. So, obviously, as you know, Shinsuke, Shinsuke Nakamura won the NXT Championship in NXT Live live event last night in Japan. Osaka, Japan. Osaka, Japan. You won it. Makes sense. So, okay, interesting. Because you know, you know me, I like to read my my uh, NXT spoilers for the month. I like to read ahead <laughs> and see what happens. So, I read what happened. And I saw what the future takeover match was supposed to be. And now it's all changed. It was supposed to be Bobby Roode and Nakamura or Bobby Roode and uh, Joe. But now it's going to be Bobby Roode and Shinsuke Nakamura, which actually makes more sense. Now because the questions, now the questions up. Feels. It's weird because I'm reading it and going, this makes zero sense. I just read the tapings for the next three weeks. I'm like this, they have to change it now. It doesn't make any sense what the tapings I've read. And it's, I, just, I'm, I don't know. It's gonna be. It's, uh, Joe was on those three tapings as a champion, though. They must have to change it. That's that's gonna be interesting. Maybe Joe gets called up. No, I, I guess that's what. I, well, I mean, does he get a re- he gets his yeah rematch he gets his rematch? At some point. But I don't know what's gonna happen now. It's they. I think they're 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 changing it. Maybe that was a quick change. Maybe Joe was originally supposed to win it last night, and there was a last minute change. Like no, no, not more. You need to win this. Because, you know, Darty likes to bury in their own town, in the hometown. So. Yeah, but they actually gave it to some guy in their yeah. home in Japan. I think they're trying to get the Japan fans interested. Yeah. That's why. Another bit of news, sad news. Uh, Jimmy Snuka only has six months to live. I guess uh, now dealing with severe memory loss. And he's now living in a hospice. Um, hospice, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is like a... Uh, a <laughs> I don't want to laugh at this, but it, it's comical in a sense, guys. We're not trying to be assholes here. I guess there's been often times where he's been trying to escape the hospice, telling people that he has a WWE match to get to. <laughs> I can just imagine him going through there and like yeah. saying, like, you know, oh, I got to face Roddy play. Piper. I got to face Hulk Hogan. I got to go. And I don't want to laugh, but like, come on, guys. Yeah, I have a little bit of a sense of humor here. At the same time, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it sucks. 26 se- months. Severe dementia and memory loss. Um, he was in the Hall of Fame, right? He got put in the Hall of Fame. I think he's a Hall of Famer now. Yeah. So, Hall of Famer. 
sad, so it's not only six months to live. Last bit of news, Paige suspension is over on December 9th, even though she is still recovering from a neck injury and won't be due back till mid-2017. Uh, hopefully, maybe uh, the injury heals faster and we get her back sooner. We'll see. Speaking of Jimmy Snuka. Uh, Tamina Snuka is returning from injury sometime next week. Well, this coming week. And she's going to be on Raw. So, mm, interesting. God. The Raw's division, I can't even call it a division right now. Yeah. Sasha and Charlotte. As much as I hate Tamina and how slow and shitty she is, I'm hoping maybe she can come back and add something to it. Because, like, people forget she was the first third generation, mm-hmm. or whatever, second or third generation, whatever. Yeah. She's the old, was the first diva. Generational woman, superstar, yeah. Generational woman to come in. Yeah. And I don't think they play off that enough. I don't think they give her the prestige that, I don't know, she should have gotten. No. Not and at all. I agree. So I'm looking forward to what to what Tamina might do. Maybe she feuds with Nia Jax. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe they have return heel and face Sasha and the whole yeah. team bad thing again. But, I see that. Uh, so we're getting into the predictions, guys. TLC 2016 tomorrow happening. Uh, six announced matches. Uh, I'm going to guess the pre-show match is going to be something stupid like Natty versus Naomi. And if that happens, I'm picking Naomi over Natty. Just a quick prediction right there. <laughs> if that actually happens, whatever. <laughs> I'm picking two paws. <laughs> <laughs> so we have six announced matches, so we'll go through all of them. Slater and Rhino versus Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton for the Tag Team Championships. SmackDown Tag Team Championships, sorry. I think it'll be a really good match. I think we're going to see a lot out of this match. I mean, we saw a pretty good match with uh, Bray Wyatt and Orton in, in uh, Double A. Um, I don't see a match being too long, though. But I have Bray Wyatt and Orton winning and getting their first titles is the Wyatt family. I agree. Bray Wyatt and Orton need to win the titles. Yeah. Slater and Rhino have done not like I, it was more of yeah. a comedy act them winning the yeah. title, the underdog thing. And now they're, they haven't done anything with the titles. So now yeah. they can chase for them if they go out the rematch or whatever. But Bray yeah. Wyatt and Randy Orton need the titles right now to continue their yeah. eventual feud later yeah. down the road. And according to our Twitter fans, yep. they say 78%. Ooh. for Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton to yeah. win. You know what? It's 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 doable, and it kind of makes sense. It's one of those things where, you know what? You wouldn't be mad if they won him. So, next one, we'll go to the main title picture. AJ Styles versus Dean Ambrose for the WWE World title. TLC match. I think this match is going to be really, really crazy. It's the only TLC match, so it's got to yeah. be good. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be a lot of brutality here. Styles, I know, can do a lot of spots with weapons. I've seen so it before in Japan and TNA and so was Ambrose. Um, hopefully it's not like the yeah, Brock Lesnar match. match. Oh my God. Um, Don't worry. We haven't heard, you haven't heard the last of that match. Trust yeah. me. I have an interesting prediction for this. Um, Styles is going to win. I'm picking Styles to retain. I think the Undertaker appears here and sets up their feud towards the Royal Rumble. That would make a lot of sense. Yep. After like after Styles yep. is and, running here. In a way, just like if you guys remember when CM Punk beat Jeff Hardy in the TLC match, I don't remember what pay-per-view that was, and the lights went out, Jeff Hardy, and CM Punk was standing over Jeff Hardy, the lights went out, and the lights came back on, it was Undertaker underneath CM Punk, and it got up and choke slam CM Punk. I think something like that's going to happen. Or maybe the Undertaker just comes out and like does the whole, you know, does the motion that he wants to title and then leaves. You know? That would be awesome. Yeah. That match needs to have, that's a yeah. dream match. Yeah. Come I through. think that's what's going to happen on Sunday. Um, I'm picking AJ Styles as well, and the Twitter verse says 72% for AJ Styles. Uh, Dean Ambrose can't win the title here, guys. 28% for Ambrose? <laughs> He's come not on. winning the title. Come on, let's be honest here. AJ Styles is the perfect champion right now. Those are those casual it's not Ambrose getting fans. stale. The Dean yeah. Ambrose fan yeah. Yeah. Whatever. So, move on to the next match. Um, what are we going to talk? Let's do uh, Nikki Bella Carmella. No DQ match. I'm picking my girl Carmella, obviously. But this is going to be an intense match. The intensity for this match has been building for like a month and a half now. Um, ever since, actually, this has been going on like for a long time. Ever since Carmella started beef with Carmella, they did have or a Carmella match. started beef with Nikki Bella. Yeah, they did for, have a regular <laughs> match at No Mercy. But, yeah. Um, this is going to be a really. I think it's going to be the closing match. I love the stipulation too. they added for this match. It just yeah, makes no sense. No DQ. Oh, yeah. it's going to be ruthless. I actually hope. To God, there's some weapon use of weapon use here. A lot of hardcore style, like me, you like throwing people into the barricade. Uh, you know, just stuff like that. Uh, I think this match is gonna be. I think it's gonna live up to expectation. That's what I'm saying. And I'm picking. I have to go with my girl Carmella, just being a biased pick here. Um, I want to go with Carmella, but I'm gonna go with Nikki Bella. See, I can't blame you for that because we all know why. You know, Nikki Bella is a John Cena of the division. You know, yeah. she's uh. 
So I expect Nikki to finally get her revenge on Carmella for all these attacks they've done. And I, don't, I, I could see this feud going another pay-per-view. Yeah, probably. And I would like that. If they can continue the way they've been doing it, I, I can agree with that. Especially and get fully if John that. Cena comes back and he yeah. gets incorporated into the feud. This could I be a like really that. good long feud. And not even for a title. Like, look no. at that. WWE, you prove it right here that you don't need... Um, Why don't you do it on your title. flagship show? <laughs> That's what I don't get. You don't need to have the title be the main focus. I actually the think team. there's a difference here because I know Devon's behind the, the, the scenes right now for SmackDown. I think he has a big influence on this. I, they need Devon's perspective on Raw too, I think. Yeah, well, good luck getting that. Yeah. Vin- but Vinnie Mac. what does our Twitterverse say? Uh, Nikki Bella, 64%. <sighs> that's Carmella almost, got 36. That's, that's so. tough. That's tough. Shot, that's probably more than I thought she, Carmella was going to get. Yeah. So good on her for making this feud. And Nikki Bella's bringing up Carmella, too. She's making her look like that credible heel now. Yeah, yeah when, I love first, it. When Carmella debuted, like she was a face yeah. and it just wasn't getting anywhere. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, Let's get into the next match. Let's see what we can talk about. Corbin, uh, Corbin and Kalisto. Yeah. Chairs match. <laughs> God, I Whatever. Do I don't even know if I want to talk about it. Because I, I know as much as I love Corbin. I'm picking Corbin being biased. It's all fucking hell here. I'm picking Corbin. That's it. And yeah. the Twitterverse says Corbin 66. You think 34% of you think that Kalisto you might You think Kalisto is match? going to beat. <laughs> if that happens and Baron Corbin gets buried by Kalisto, he needs to get traded to Raw. Yeah. If he loses this okay. match. He needs to get traded to Raw. I 100% agree. Fully agree. There's no way... A cruiserweight type wrestler should be beating Baron Corbin no. like that. Especially he's a guy that you're trying to build up to be a next top heel. Yeah. No. So, uh, next match we'll talk about. Uh, what is, so, the you said the Twitterverse fucking owned uh, Corbin, that. Corbin, no. Th- it was actually not bad. Corbin won 66%. 34% that Kalisto would win. <laughs> Jesus so Christ. So, next we'll do... Uh, let's do Miz Dolph Ziggler. All right. Um... Ladder match, Intercontinental Championship. Should be, I think this should be the match. It should be good. I think this is going to be one of those, you know, like, we know, you think about iconic IC title matches. It's going to be good. I know. You think of IC, iconic ladder IC title matches. You think of Razor Ramon and Shawn Michaels. Everyone thinks it's going to be that caliber match. I don't think it's going to be that good. You don't think it's going to be that good? I I think that's like, I think that's a little bit crazy to say that, but, um, (sighs) I, I think they'll put up a good match. I don't think it'll be as good as their No Mercy match because I that was one of my matches of the year. Okay. Um, but I think it'll be a good match. Like it okay. won't be their best. Uh, match I, okay, I can get, I can agree with you there. It'll be as but as good as they can do with the ladder mat with the ladder. And I assume Maurice is going to get involved at some point and mm-hmm. screw over Ziggler and Miz is going to retain. <sighs> and I'm, then I'm Miz picking the other pick here though. I'm picking Dolph Ziggler and I think Miz is going to lose and go to Raw. He's going to be part of the trade that goes to Raw and. It's gonna be it's gonna be done fairly here, and it's gonna be a fair win, and Dolph Ziggler is gonna win. But I don't want to like I feel like Miz wouldn't be used right on Raw. Like Miz is more relevant than he's ever been right now. He is he has benefited the most from yeah. the brand split from like any of the males out there. He has become relevant again. Nobody gave a fuck about the Miz before. Yeah, and now he's been a great heel Intercontinental Champion. Yeah, and I just want to because if Dolph Ziggler wins, then they have to have another match. That's why I want maybe. to see Maybe. Well, maybe not. Maybe there's a trade. Out. Maybe there's a trade and he oh. never gets that. Maybe he goes to Raw and says, I never got my Intercontinental Championship rematch. I deserve a, a, a U.S. title shot. Hey, we get Roll Reigns out of the main event picture. Face Miz. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Something I cannot watch on Raw. <laughs> uh, whatever. I can understand that, yeah. but I, I see Miz moving on. Yeah. I don't know who he's going to face next, but... Maybe Apollo. Uh, we already. Uh, yeah. What does the Twitterverse say? Uh, Miz fifty six percent. Wow, that's close. That is a close. That's close. why we think it's gonna be a match of the night. That's a close poll. That, but yeah, so we expect that to be a really good match. So last match we'll talk yeah. about. Yeah. Tables match for the women's SmackDown Women's Championship. Becky Lynch versus Alexa Bliss. Uh, I see this being a really good match. I hopefully think that they a table spot is done right. I'm picking your girl Alexa Bliss to win, yeah. and uh, I think she'd be a credible. She needs the title right now. She, She's a complete package. The title would just signif- signif- uh, signify oh. that. I can't speak right now. <laughs> Solidify. Solidify that. And I think she can hold on to that title to WrestleMania. You need to give the title to someone, to the best, to the person yeah. who's doing the best right now. And right now, I'm not even being biased because I love it's Alexa. It's Alexa Bliss. No, I 100% agree. Phenomenal I think, work I think a lot of people can get behind us with that. I th- Alexa Bliss is the best diva on SmackDown right now, and sorry, the whole division in WWE, she's doing she's doing the best right now. Becky just I, Becky hasn't impressed me with the title. She hasn't yeah. done much with the title for me to think that she is the best on SmackDown. She just yeah. has not 
elevated the title like everyone thought she was going to do as a number one pick. Oh, I agree. I 100% uh, agree. Twitterverse says Becky Lynch 60% to 40. <sighs> um, mm. And I'm obviously picking Alexa Bliss. That's not even a question. Yeah. But I could see Becky winning Retaining. and continuing. As you say that, I do see that too. And uh, it could um, happen. But I think Alexa deserves the title right now. She's done a phenomenal job since yeah. being called up. I don't think anyone expected yeah. this much growth from her so quickly. Yeah. And Becky needs to step it up if she's going to keep going on with the title. So, it uh, should be a good one tomorrow. Should be. I'm looking forward to TLC a yeah, lot. Should be. So, guys, tune in tomorrow for the Sunday Night Heat. The topic tomorrow is roster trades. I asked you guys who you think should be traded to which brand and for what reason. Thanks, I have my top five trades for uh, for tomorrow, so we'll get into that tomorrow. So tune in tomorrow for the Sunday Night Heat. Thanks for sticking with us through this late night edition. Yeah, of, of the Lowdown Show Plus. I know we're running in here at 84 minutes. It's probably going to be one of our longest podcasts ever, but you know what? Whatever. We had to do it. Yep. Uh, so, guys, that is going to wrap it up. For week number 34 of the Lowdown Show Brain Wars and TLC 2016 predictions on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our Twitter poll segment called Luke Gallus Polls and WWE Headlines, which will return next week where we talk about any important news in the WWE. Remember, every week the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live. That's right, live. I think we're the only wrestling podcast out there that, you know, produces content live i don't know if there's any out there let us know if there is but we are live on spreaker at spreaker.com slash nhbwp every week if you like to join in the conversation have your thoughts and questions read and discuss on the podcast tweet us in the old bar wp maximum three questions maximum three questions and dropping comments on youtube i am your host the self-proclaimed greatest host kyle masters and every week i continue to be joined by my corporate co-host the blissful boss corporate cappy tomorrow i'm not blissed off And as always, we're reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. You're looking at the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. (laughs) Is that what you got?